Hello, football fans and hockey fans. Hockey is back, baby. <laughs> uh, it's partially because of that that I wanted to get this uh, video over with so I can focus on the uh, opening day, the opening day doubleheader. Um, uh, it, it is early out here. It's, it's, it's early in the morning, and uh, first take is on, and no surprise, they are talking about the proverbial elephant in the room. Well, I should say the elephant that's no longer in Vegas's room anymore. John Gruden. That's the uh, big. That's the big story coming from week five. We all know about it. Um, it came out. It came to light that he made racist comments about the head of the Players Association back in uh, 2011. This was. This was. Uh, I think this was Saturday. That this came out before the Raiders game against the Bears, against the Bears, and as I'm watching Monday Night Football between the Ravens and um, and the Colts, but more on that later. Um, the breaking, I see Adam Schefter with this shocking breaking news: Gruden's out as coach because even more stuff came out on him, and it was a it was a load, it was a big load. Uh, so not just the stuff against Demore Demore Smith. Um, homophobic comments uh, directed towards the commissioner Roger Goodell um, accusing Goodell of, pre of pressuring uh, Jeff Fisher then coach of the LA Rams of drafting uh, drafting Michael Sam who was the first openly um, who was the first openly uh, uh, gay player in the NFL and Remember, the Raiders have an openly gay player, Carl on the seat. Um, so that's, so it, it makes me wonder what the hell's in Gruden's mind when he says this crap. Um, and there's misogynistic comments. He didn't like having female refs. He hated the 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 the, the, the social the social justice um, uh, protests for protests. Uh, the national anthem protests in the wake of all these uh, police uh, sh these, these shootings all the all the horrible check boxes racism homophobia misogyny, misogyny filled he was basically the sports equivalent of Mike Richards who got canned from his jeopardy job um, for the same reason just immensely problematic and yeah um, I've been watching first take and they've been talking about it uh, for, for the first like 45 minutes damn near so for what I'm seeing now they're they're, they're done on that subject um, they had a, he had a 10 year deal worth 100 million 10 million a year he was in he was in year four of this and I and, and finally he's out the door because of all this, all that stuff that's out, it's just it's just disgusting that people conduct themselves like that. But that's my two that's my two cents about it. Um, let's, let's let's move on, just like first takes doing with the football action, and oh, I have to talk about this. What the hell was going on in Cincinnati? So I'm watching this game, and. It was it was crazy and it got crazier in the final minutes. Mason Crosby missing kisses, missing kicks, three in a row, and uh, Evan McLaughlin was missing them too. And it was this back of, it was this back and forth game of hot potato in the final minutes of the fourth quarter and in the overtime. You take it, you take the game. No, you take it. <laughs> and. It was great. I just couldn't believe what was going on with the kickers. Five straight missed field goals between those two in a row. Finally, Crosby ended the horrible cycle after the right after the two minute the two minute war in overtime. Yes, there's two minute warrants in overtime. Um and won it twenty five twenty two. It was absolutely insane. It really was. And um and, and, and in the end 
And in the end, um, the Packers end up winning. That's four in a row. And that game saw both quarterbacks play well. Not just Rodgers, but Joe, Bur Joe Burrow played played very well as, as well. I think the Bengals could be for real if all goes well. I mean, they're 3-2, and two, but that's still a good start for them. Um, what else? Oh, yes. The Chiefs. There's something troublesome in Kansas City. They are officially a team that's a team that's whose who's season could be in jeopardy. And I say that even though it's been five weeks, only been five weeks, but um, they're two and three now. <sighs> Pardon, uh, they're two and three now. The Bills went to their place and just flattened them. Uh, in this in the AFC Championship rematch and. It's just, it's just not looking good for Kansas City. Mahomes has six interceptions already. I still remember, I think it was last year, it took until game five or six of the season for him to throw one. And not only that, he had been stuck in one interception for about two months. So, I don't know what it is. I A theory I have, a theory I have is... The, the, the Super Bowl loss, that was one of his worst games, a real terrible game for him. I think that's been affecting him a bit. <sighs> but, um, the fact is, dating back to that Super Bowl, the Chiefs have lost four out of six games. And they're two or three now, and they're in the bottom of the AFC West to play a, a position that very few people figured they would be at this point. And it's pretty troublesome. Things need to get back on and it's getting worse it is, it is getting worse because their running back Clyde Edwards Hilaire got injured during that game he has an MCL sprain and he's gonna be out for a few weeks so that's more that's another big hit it, 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 the injury bug oh boy the injury bug hit a lot of players in week five badly hit a lot of teams badly it, it, it started with that Thursday game uh, it was a great game between the Rams and Seahawks, but they always have good games when they, when they come to come together. But it didn't end. It didn't end well for the Seahawks. Not only did they lose the game, but they lost their quarterback. Russell Wilson had the dislocated finger, and now they say he's going to be out for several weeks. So, with the way Seattle's been starting, it looks like their season's pretty much screwed. My goodness. Um. What else? Hey. The Giants, pardon, the Giants are losing, are losing players left and right. Saquon is injured again. I feel so sorry for him. I really do. <clears throat> because I remember about, I think it was, was it two years ago? Yeah. Two years ago, I had Saquon on my fantasy team. One of my fantasy teams. And he had injuries, I think, pretty much in the middle of the season. Now, he was able to come back to fit in the end of the season. Which was good because when he's healthy, he could go. I think I ended up winning that league, but um, he's been having injury problems ever since. He got hurt last year and missed all the rest of that year, and now this year he's injured, and it's not known how, how long he's out. Him and Christian McCaffrey are just cursed with injuries, um, and uh, of course, Daniel Jones, their quarterback, he got hurt. He got lit up, concussion. And Kenny Galladay is kind of injured a bit, and that's the last thing he needs because he already had Shepard and, uh, and uh, Slayton out. That's just awful. Um, but uh, yeah, they got shelled by the Cowboys, who are definitely uh, going to run away with the NFC East. It looks like they're going to have to slip on a lot of banana peels for any of those teams to catch them. Um, of course, the Niners uh, lost a close one in, in, in Arizona. Arizona's still undefeated. And now Trey Lance could miss time. They now have two injured quarterbacks. My goodness. Injury, injury bugs are a horrible thing in the NFL. Um, they are. It's really horrible. The Jaguars. They have now lost 20 in a row. 20. Uh, Tennessee, Tennessee shelled them, and now the Ch Jacksonville's losing streak is now reached 20. 
they become the third team to lose 20 in a row, joining the old Chicago Cardinals and, of course, the Buccaneers from the 70s. Um, it, it's, it's bad, and especially with the Urban Meyer mess. It's even worse. But, um, but yeah, um, week five was plenty, plenty fruitful, partially for the wrong reasons. Um, it had its comedic moments with the kicking. It was kind of a kicking, it was kind of an epidemic with the kicking. Kickers were just missing everything. Like the New England game, I think, started with three, three missed extra points. Uh, it was insane. Um, and I mentioned the injury bug, Juju Smith Schuster, he's out for pretty much the season. Uh, just when Pittsburgh got that win they needed to kind of start the road to getting back on track. Of course, uh, the, the Falcons played the international game in London and won that. Um, and uh, the, the Chargers and the Browns, 47-42. No, no defense whatsoever. You love games like that. It was crazy. And of course, I mentioned Monday night game. Uh, Baltimore came, had that comeback win and won in overtime. They were down 22 to 3 and 25 to 9. And it was after 25 to 9 deficit that they scored, I think it was 22 straight points. Oh boy. Colts have problems. Now, for once, it wasn't Wentz's fault. Wentz played his, Wentz played his ass off. They went to overtime because, again, the kicking, the missed kicking epidemic, Blankenship, Rodrigo Blankenship had a chance to win it in regulation. He hooked the field goal. That's how they ended up in overtime. Uh, uh, Ravens won the toss, got the ball, went all the way. That's how it went. <clears throat> so that's week five in a nutshell, and I do mean nutshell. Uh, pretty eventful, mostly for the wrong reasons. Uh, the injury bugs getting out of control, and uh, teams are winning, getting comeback wins, and other teams are just falling off. It's insane. Now, what's in store for us in week six? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, week six starts off with the Bucks heading to Philly uh, for Thursday Night Football. As far as other action, there's another London game. Um, <sighs> excuse me. Um, there's another London game. The Dolphins and Jags face each other. Jags are trying to avoid reaching Blackjack. 21 straight losses. You know, I swear. I've said this for a while. The NFL tends tends to send their worst teams to London. You know, those the, the British fans don't get to see superstars, the, the powerhouses. It's always the lowest teams in the league <laughs> that um usually end up playing in, in those near national games. I wonder if they're trying to tell us something. But anyway, so uh, Jaguars and Dolphins, Chiefs are in D.C. hoping to turn start turn things around uh Packers Bears that's important because the Bears beat the Raiders and now it's kind of neck and neck for the in, in the division the Bears are right behind the Packers uh Ravens and Chargers battle four and one teams uh the Raiders after that mess head to Denver um the, the Sunday night game is the Steelers hosting a Seahawks team that will be without Russell Wilson. And Monday Night Football is Bills and Titans. And that is my recap of Week 5. If you like this video, click the like button. Click subscribe if you want more of this material. And my story my a story on Week 5 of the regular season for, on Vocal will be... The link to that will be in the description below when it's published. And I'll be back pretty quick. I'll be back to recap the Division Series when that ends. Because uh, it's almost, it's pretty much almost over. And, of course, I'll be back next week to recap week six of the NFL season. So stay tuned.